Hey everyone, Path here, and in this video I want to take a look at an equation used in the study of electromagnetism that is known as the Lorentz force equation. We'll be understanding what each of the terms in this equation means, but as always we'll try and keep the mathematics as simple as possible. So if you enjoyed this video then please do hit the thumbs up button and subscribe for more fun physics content. Let's get into it. The first thing we should understand is that the Lorentz force equation deals with the force exerted on a charged particle by electric and magnetic fields. So let's take a look at these fields. Electric fields, firstly, can be used to describe how electric charges interact with each other. The convention that we most often use in physics is that electric field lines begin at positive charges and they end at negative charges. These field lines essentially represent the force that a small positively charged particle would experience if we were to place it in the electric field. And this sort of makes sense, like charges repel, so the small positive charge will be repelled from the large positive one, and opposite charges attract, so the small positive charge will be attracted to the negative charge. But these electric field lines give us a little bit more detail about exactly how this small positive charge would interact with the electric field. It's also worth noting here that electric fields are vector fields. This means that we can assign a vector to every single point in this region of space. The size of each vector is related to how strong a force our small positive charge would experience, and the direction simply gives the direction in which the force is applied. Now, similar to electric fields, we can also think about magnetic fields. Our chosen convention is that magnetic field lines emanate from the north pole of a magnet, and they are absorbed into the south pole. Magnetic field lines are a little bit more complicated than electric field lines in that there can also be magnetic field lines inside our magnet. Check out this video I made a while ago explaining this in more detail. But for now, if we just think about what's happening outside the magnet, then our magnetic field lines for this particular bar magnet look like this. They essentially begin at the North Pole and end at the South Pole. The reason for this is that magnetic field lines represent what would happen to a small North Pole if placed in the magnetic field. Like poles repel, so it would be repelled away from the north pole of the bar magnet, and opposite poles attract, so it would be attracted to the south pole. Now, in reality, single poles, either north or south, do not seem to be able to exist in our universe. It seems like both north and south pole must exist together. So another way to interpret these magnetic field lines is to imagine that they're representing the direction in which a small compass will point when placed at that point in the magnetic field. For example, if we placed a compass here in the magnetic field, its needle would spin, so it's pointing in this direction, and similarly for this point in space, this point in space, and this point in space. Now, magnetic fields are also a type of vector field in that we can assign a vector to every point in this region of space. And this is similar to what we saw for electric fields earlier, except the things generating electric and magnetic fields are different, at least on the surface. Now, with that brief overview of both the electric and magnetic vector fields, let's return to our Lorentz force equation. We might at this point be able to recognize a couple of terms in it. For example, we can see the electric field represented by E and the magnetic field represented by B. And because they're both vector fields, we are representing them with vectors, hence the arrows on top. Now, as we mentioned earlier, this Lorentz force equation allows us to calculate the force that a small charged particle will experience when placed in an electric and magnetic field. In this case, the particle will have a charge Q. That's what this Q is representing in the equation. And a useful thing to do here is to expand the bracket by multiplying each of the terms by Q. Now what we've got are two separate terms. F is equal to QE plus QV cross B. What we're seeing here is simply a sum of two different forces. This is the force exerted by the electric field on our small charged particle. And this is the force exerted by the magnetic field on our small charged particle. We'll see what V means very shortly, as well as why we write what looks like a multiplication symbol between two vectors. But before we do that, let's take a look at the first part of this equation, the force exerted by the electric field QE. This is the easier of the two terms to think about, because if we have a particle with charge Q placed in an electric field, the force that this particle experiences is Q times the strength of that electric field E. And we also go one step further by making this a vector equation, which means that the direction of the force exerted is also included. This is done because we're keeping the vector version of the electric field E rather than just thinking about its magnitude or size. And so the stronger the field, the stronger the force our charged particle experiences, and the direction of the force is in the same direction as the field lines. So that's the electric force exerted on our charge Q. Now let's think about the magnetic force, which is slightly trickier. It turns out that if a charged particle is placed in a magnetic field and that charged particle is stationary relative to the magnetic field, 
then the magnetic field doesn't actually exert a force on the particle. However, if the charged particle is moving relative to that magnetic field, then it can experience a force. This is where our vector v comes into play. This represents the velocity of our charged particle. And it's a vector because velocity itself is a vector. It's got magnitude or size, which is the speed of the particle. And it also has direction, which is the direction in which the particle is traveling. The magnetic field exerts a force on our charged particle that is equal to Q, the charge of the particle, multiplied by V cross B. Now let's take a look at what this last bit actually means. V is the velocity of our particle, which is a vector. B is the magnetic field, which is also a vector. And what we're finding here is the vector product or cross product between these two. It's not just a simple multiplication like there is between two numbers, say. For those of you unfamiliar with vector products, this is how they work. If we take two random vectors, let's say A and B, let's not say they represent anything particular, they're just mathematical entities, they're just vectors. And we want to try and find the vector product A cross B between these two vectors. Then the end result is going to be another vector that is perpendicular to both A and B and whose size and direction depends on how well A and B are aligned with each other. Now, as it turns out, if A and B are exactly perpendicular to each other at 90 degrees to each other, then the vector product A cross B, again, will also be perpendicular to the original two, but its size will be as large as possible. Its size will be equal to the size of A multiplied by the size of B. However, if these two original vectors A and B are exactly aligned with each other or exactly anti-aligned, then the size of our vector product A cross B is going to be zero. So now let's link all of this back to our magnetic field and the charged particle placed in this field. Let's imagine that our magnetic field lines are pointing in this direction. What this is representing is magnetic field lines coming out of the screen. And let's also imagine that our charged particle is initially moving in this direction. So that is its velocity vector. Well, because the magnetic field lines are coming out of the screen in this scenario, this means that V and B are perpendicular to each other. And the end result V cross B is going to be another vector that is perpendicular to them both. So our V cross B vector looks something like this. Now, if we take this vector and multiply it by Q, the charge of the particle, which essentially just resizes the vector because charge is just a scalar, then what we get is the force exerted on this particle by the magnetic field. And as we can see, the force exerted is directly perpendicular to the initial velocity of our particle. As we expected, right? A cross product is always going to be perpendicular to one of the original vectors which means that our particle, instead of just moving straight across, is going to be pulled slightly in this direction due to the force. But then at some later point in time, it's now going to be moving in this direction. And if we repeat the process by working out V cross B and then multiplying that by Q, then we find that the force exerted by the magnetic field now points in this direction. And we can repeat this process a few times. And what we see is that our particle will move along a circular path. This is circular motion, and for those of you familiar with it, the force is always perpendicular to the direction of the velocity of any object moving in a circle. This means that the speed of the object doesn't actually change unless there are some other forces being exerted on the particle. But in this scenario, that's not going to happen because we've just got a magnetic field and a charged particle. But interestingly, the direction of motion changes constantly. It moves in a circle. And so what we see here is that the force exerted by a magnetic field on a moving charged particle causes it to move along a circular path. But the most essential point that we've seen here is that a magnetic field can exert a force in the first place on a charged particle. And that force is given by QV cross B, at which point we can return to our Lorentz force equation. We can see now that if our particle is placed in a region of space where there's both an electric field and a magnetic field, then the total or net force on our particle is going to be given by this equation. This is the contribution of the electric field, and this is the contribution of the magnetic field. And so that is an overview of what each term in the Lorentz force equation represents and how we can use it. And with all of that being said, I'm going to finish up here. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please do hit the thumbs up button and subscribe for more fun physics content. Hit that bell button if you'd like to be notified when I upload. And please do check out my Patreon page if you'd like to support me on there. I wanted to say thank you to all of you for supporting this channel. I really appreciate it. I will see you very soon.